Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to OPC Kids Ministry. We are spending the next few months trying to answer this question, who is God? And today we're going to learn that God is our provider. But before we do that, let's take a look at our new memory verse for this series. You can find it in 1 John chapter 4, verse 9. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we may have eternal life through him. Now, whether you have a lot or a little, God has provided for you. In our Bible story today, we're going to see how God provided food. So let's talk about food. How many of you guys love to cook? I love it. Absolutely love it. Now, I cook a lot of Italian foods because that is what I grew up with at home. But I've been branching out. I've made some bulgogi. I've tried chicken fried rice. I've even made moussaka. And I love to go through my cookbooks and see what I can make. And sometimes those recipes, they're really, really good, right? I get the thumbs up from my family. And sometimes some of those recipes, not so much. I want you guys to email me something that you guys would like to try. And who knows, maybe when we finally get back together, we can try some of those recipes, all right? Now, God is our provider and those meals, good or bad, they came from him. So let's look at our Bible story to see the amazing meal God provided for a bunch of people. And the Bible in itself was provided by God to us. And it's a letter from him full of stories of how much he loves people. And prayer is another thing that God provided. It's a way to talk to him. So let's talk with him now. Let's pray. Dear God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, may our hearts and minds be focused on you alone in these moments so that we may hear the word that you intend for each and every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we're learning that God is our provider. And just with a few loaves of bread and some fish, he made enough to feed 5,000 men and women and children. So let's see what happens when our friend, Awesome Andy, tries to multiply food. Check your emails for the link to the video called Something's Fishy. All right, everyone's going to need a pencil and some paper. So grab your stuff, pause here. Okay, now I want you guys to get ready because I just invited thousands of people to your house for dinner and I bet you don't have enough food. So in the next minute or so, we're going to see how many servings of food that we can make, okay? And you can choose any food you want, okay? Mine will be ice cream, of course. Okay, and you can draw it over and over again, but you could draw pizza, you could draw burgers, you could draw asparagus, you can draw kimchi. Doesn't matter to me. As long as you draw as much food as you can in the next minute so we can feed all these people, okay? We got, let's, I'm going to start it from five, four, three, two, one, go. All right, so of course I'm gonna start with my ice cream. All right, and if it's summertime, that means it's burger time. Burgers on the barbecue, nothing better than that, eh? So let's draw a burger. We're gonna draw some pizza. Put some mushrooms. I like mushrooms on my pizza. I also like onions and tomato. I'm not a big pepperoni fan, but I do like bacon. Who doesn't like bacon, really? All right, then we've got some salad. Because if you put anything in a salad, it'll taste good. There's something about that. Oh, how about some chocolate? We just had Easter, so there's some chocolate still in the house. Lots of chocolate in the house. How long it lasts? Nobody really knows. What else? Oh, chicken. I'm a big chicken fan, too. I like my chicken, so I'll do a little drumstick here. Let's do fish, put some fish, maybe some bread. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. All right. Okay, these are all my foods that I drew in the minute. Now, do you guys think we have enough food to feed those thousands of people? What would it take to prepare enough food for all those guests? Now, we couldn't draw enough food for thousands of people. And making real food for that many people, well, that's going to be impossible to do. But God is our provider. So when the situation happened to Jesus, it was no problem, right? We read in Matthew chapter 14, verses 15 to 16. That evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, 
and it's getting really late. Send the crowds away so that they can go to their villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, that isn't necessary. You feed them. Okay, what would you say to Jesus if he told you that? Because in my head, I'm thinking, are you nuts? Do you have any idea how, many fo- how much food we're going to need and how many people are here? Like, that's crazy. But here's what Jesus' friends said. But we have only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. So let's think about how much food we really need for this many people. In Jesus' day, fish and bread were common foods. And we still eat fish and bread today. But I think, well, you know, if I was having a party, I'm having a pizza party, right? That's right. So we're going to have to do a little bit of math. So you're going to want to have a calculator handy. And if you've got a phone, most phones come with calculators, right? But if you don't have a calculator, you can do it the old fashioned way with pen and paper. That's right, okay? So let's find out how many slices each member of your family would like to have, okay? And then you're gonna add up those slices and find out how many total slices you're gonna need and divide that by the number of people in your house, okay? Now, in my family, we have four people. There's my husband, Chris, my son, Connor, my daughter, Juliana, or Juby as we call her, and myself. There's also Samson the dog, but we don't give him a full piece of pizza. Now, we're pretty much a three slices per person kind of family, right? So this one's kind of easy. Three plus three plus three plus three equals 12 slices of pizza. Now divide that that by four people. Well, that's three slices of pizza, okay? Now let's multiply that by 5,000. So let me think about this again. Mine's again pretty easy, right? That's three slices times 5,000, which equals 15,000 slices of pizza. Now, that's how many slices we need, but here's another calculation that we have to do, okay? Now, use your calculator to divide the total number of slices by eight, because that's how many individual pizzas we're gonna need. So I would need, if I divide 15,000 by eight, I'm going to need 1,875 pizzas. That's a lot of pizza. Okay, now that we've figured that out, we're going to bring that pizza home, and it's going to be stacked up, right? Because when you bring pizzas, you stack them up, right? Now, most pizza boxes are about 1.75 inches tall, about that much. So just under two inches, okay? So let's take that number of pizza that you would need. Okay, I would need 1,875 pizzas. We're gonna multiply that by 1.75 and then divide it by 12. So 1,875 pizzas times 1.75 divided by 12 equals 273 feet. Now, just to let you know, I am five foot four inches and a quarter tall, okay? That's a lot of food and it's way taller than a stack of pizzas than any of us, right? So now they didn't have pizzas in Jesus' day, but that helps us give us a picture about how much food Jesus really needed, right? And this, here's something cool. Jesus didn't need to do all this mass. He just started breaking up the food to make sure there was enough, right? And by the way, that's 5,000 men, but there were also women and children there. But God is our provider, so let's see how he provided. Bring them here, he said. Then he told the people to sit down on the grass. And Jesus took the five loaves and two fish, and he looked up towards heaven, and he blessed them. Then breaking the loaves into pieces, he gave the bread to his disciples, who distributed it to the people. They ate as much as they wanted. And then afterward, the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftovers. About 5,000 men were fed that day, in addition to all the women and children. So how do you think that Jesus was able to make so much food out of so little? And what does this story show you about who God is? God is our provider. To Jesus' friends, it seemed impossible to feed more than 5,000 people with just five loaves of bread and two fish. And as we saw with our pizza math, that's not nearly enough food, okay? But for Jesus, it was no big deal. In fact, there was more food left over after everyone ate than they started with, okay? God is our provider and he can provide in big ways. And if he can provide enough food for all those people, he can provide everything you need. So let's trust him with that now, okay? On your paper, 
Draw something that you need God to provide for you or someone you know, okay? Maybe you know someone who has a really bad disease and you want God to provide healing, okay? Or maybe you know someone being bullied or school, at school or maybe you're the one who's being bullied at school and you want God to provide protection. Whatever it is, draw what you need and then fold up your paper so that no one sees it, okay? So I'm gonna do a little drawing here. Um, let's try another. I've got somebody who's in need of healing. Okay, so I'm gonna take this paper. I'm gonna fold it up right here. All right, remember that Jesus had 12 baskets of leftovers of fish and bread. Okay, God is our provider and he can provide everything you need and more. We're learning that God is our provider, but sometimes it doesn't feel like that. Have you ever prayed for something and, it did, and God didn't do what you asked for? Okay, so let's talk about that, okay? Like I once asked God to help me get this job that I really, really wanted, and I didn't get it. I didn't even get an interview. Now, what if you guys prayed for something that you really, really wanted, only to realize that God, ended, God did not provide it for you, okay? Now, let's think about it. If God is our provider, but there's been times where we've prayed for really significant things and God didn't provide, then how can we see God providing it when it doesn't seem like he is? Okay, let's dig into that. So listen to this. In Acts 28, 3 to 5, we read, As Paul gathered an armful of sticks and was laying them on the fire, a poisonous snake, driven out by the heat, bit him on the hand. The people of the island saw it hanging from his hand, and they said to each other, A murderer, no doubt. Though he escaped from the sea, justice will not permit him to live. But Paul shook off the snake into the fire, and he was unharmed. Now, what was Paul's need in this passage first? Okay, what was his need? Okay, he needed to get the snake off his hand and make sure that it would heal, right? He needed healing for his hand. Now, did God provide for that need? Okay, yes, he did. Now listen to what it says in 2 Corinthians 12, 7 to 9. So to keep me from becoming proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me and keep me from becoming proud. Three different times I begged the Lord to take it away, and each time he said, My grace is all you need. My power works best in your weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. Now, what do you think about God providing healing for Paul's snake bite, but didn't deliver him from the thorn in his flesh, right? Well, he wanted Paul to understand that God's grace is all that he needs. In Paul's weakness, God's power works best. So what did God do to provide instead of removing Paul's thorn? Okay, what did he provide? That's right, he provided Jesus' strength. So even though God didn't provide healing from Paul's thorn like he did from the snake bite, he provided something else, strength. And we don't know why God sometimes provides for us, but even when we feel like that he's not providing for us, we can look for ways that he is providing. So let's look at a story of a woman in modern times who did just that, okay? Laura was homeless. She was living on the streets just trying to stay warm, and she had a backpack full of warm clothes and camping gear, but it got stolen. Okay, and someone stopped and gave her a gift card for fast food and some of those hot hands. You know those ones where you crack them and then they warm up to keep your hands warm? Well, Laura said, wow, God is taking care of me. My backpack was stolen, so I don't have much, but someone else gave me a blanket. And now you've given me a gift card and some hot hands. God is taking care of me. Now, Laura could count everything that she had on one hand. But even then, Laura saw how much God provided for her. So what can you learn from Laura? Now, even when things are tough, we need to look for the blessings in our lives and be thankful for them, right? Like think about COVID. We can't meet face to face. We can't go see our friends like we used to, but we have technology now that allows us to at least speak to them, seeing them, even though we're not together. Well, that was more than they had 100 years ago when the last pandemic happened. So we can be thankful for that. 
problem is, is when we have a lot, it's sometimes easy to forget to be thankful for it. And Laura thanked God for providing a blanket. But if you live in a warm house with lots of blankets, then, well, maybe you never thought of it as something God provided for you. We have a lot, and it can be easy to focus on what we've lost. But when you don't have much, you tend to be more thankful for what you have. See, God is our provider. When we have a lot, God is our provider. And when we only have three things like Laura did, guess what? God is our provider. And when it feels like God isn't providing what we want or what we need, we can look for things that he's providing, like strength, to get us through. Okay, we've been learning all day that God is our provider, and we can be thankful for whether we have a little or a lot. And we're going to be thankful right now. Let's wrap it up in prayer. Let's pray. Dear God, you are our provider. Thank you. We know you heard our prayers, and you will supply just what we need. In Jesus' name we pray and all the children say, Amen. All right, guys, thank you for tuning in this week. Until next time, if someone asks you who is God, you tell them God is our provider. Ciao.